Hello and welcome to Corona Crisis. My name is David Haythornthwaite and I'm the chairman of AFC Filed. And over the next uh, few weeks and months, uh, I'm hopefully going to take you through what goes on behind the scenes of a non-league football team at times like this. Uh, we're going to discuss all the issues regarding uh, behind the scenes, the players, uh, off-field staff, all the things that contribute to the to the running of the club uh, and how we're dealing with the issues that have been thrown at us on a daily and weekly basis uh, so that it gives you a really good insight to the club uh, and the running of clubs in general. So I look forward to you joining me on this journey. David, thank you once again for joining us as we look to look to continue with part six of our ongoing series, looking behind the scenes at AFC Fylde. We're going to discuss our, our current options and uh, what the outlook looks like for Fylde in the coming weeks, months, after the news about the season. Uh, and what do you expect to happen in the immediate future over the coming weeks? Okay. Okay, so David, we've, we've spoken about the, the other issues that we had immediate issues with in terms of the National League and the players. Can we now move on to what are, the, what are our options now? What are the options being discussed in terms of finalising the league and going forward? Yeah, uh, I think we touched on that uh, a, a little bit in, in the previous uh, uh, discussions. But to, to, to sort of just maybe bring that up to date, uh, we've now got uh, uh, a number of options which will be my understanding is will be presented uh, to uh, the clubs to decide upon uh, and, and those those questions will be uh, as a result of, of uh, I'm sure of, of lobbying from various factions within the league uh, I suppose there's there's three three basic camps aren't there there's, there's those that uh, you know want to go up there's those that want to stay up uh, and there's those in the middle, uh, and the ones in the middle have no vested interest at all, so uh, they're, they're not concerned with that. The ones who want to go up, obviously, are the ones that, uh, you know, we talked about Barrow, who sit there as current champions as the league is at the moment, Harrogate, who, who's sitting there saying, we could have caught them, and they've got a reasonable case, and then, of course, we've got the other situation, where you've got Yeovil and... and Solly Hall and, and a couple of others uh, who also think, well, we could have maybe caught them. So, um, as I said earlier, the, the league now is a, a, it, it finds itself in a difficult position. So it, it's going to have to put out there some proposals. I think some proposals maybe that have been muted are going to maybe because of just exactly because what we talked about uh, earlier, uh, that Chris Whitty, you know, the chief medical officer, gave a clear indication that, you know, things aren't going to get back to normal quickly. And as we've said, football is going to be the last crowds. Playing football with crowds again is, is 2021. Uh, and those are really, really important because uh, even if we can go with testing, uh, I think it's going to be really difficult to have playoffs uh, in, 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 in a big way. I, I've suggested that there could be a one-off playoff. Uh, I still stand by that. I, I think it, it's going to be quite costly, uh, but I think it's doable. But to have a number of playoffs uh, in the normal format of playoffs, I think, is not the right thing to do. So I, I suspect that option could disappear off the table. Uh, so we're going to be left with pretty much, I think, what, I, what I've said earlier, which is probably either do we go with a point per game or do we go with a null and void? I think my, my position on that you know, is, is fairly clear, Adam. Uh, and uh, as I said, when I voted, a lot of people said, well, David, you've voted to end the league. You know, it's a bit like Turkey's voting for Christmas, really. You could be putting yourself down. Uh, I said at the time, and I say again, you know, I put my trust in, in, in people to do the right thing and to do the fair thing. And, and I think when these things happen, most people do that. So uh, uh, we've got to wait and see what those options are first. But I expect those will certainly be two of them. There may be a twist on, on one of them, uh, the, the National League 
as I said, I think I've said before, can, is in a position because of the coronavirus situation to effectively write their, their own rules if, in this situation. So I don't think it's, it's hard and fast and, and clear like it may be normally. So uh, I've no doubt they'll deliberate a lot and come back to us. So I would temper that by uh, saying that it, it's very much going to be determined by what happens uh, in the other leagues, Adam. And uh, uh, as I've said from the get-go, the Premier League, I believe, are going to determine everything uh, based on the information we have uh, and uh, what we, what we, what we, where we seem to be heading. I don't think we're going to get a, uh, a finish to the Premier League and, and therefore I think the Premier League will protect itself. We won't see any relegation uh, and therefore by definition there won't be any promotion from Championship and that cascades down to us. We come back to that that one place, shall we say, that's uh, available because of the buried demise and, and I think, you know, I, I've given my view on that before, what, what should happen, there's no point in me going over old ground. Uh, but I do think we, it will be driven by, and so maybe from the National League point of view, I'm sure from the Executive Committee, uh, they'd be really happy if it's taken out of their hand because uh, as, uh, whatever they do, uh, they're in a difficult position. In terms of your discussions, are you sitting tight and waiting for a decision to be given to you to maybe vote on or told, or are you discussing with other chairmen and the league? Well, I think there was, there was, there was, a, there was a, a lot of discussion uh, before the vote because uh, a lot of chairmen, a lot of clubs shall we say, wanted to know what the questions were before they voted on ending the league for obvious reasons. So uh, if you were, uh, if you were, for example, uh, Notts County, then if you knew that the league was going to be ended and it was points per game, you wouldn't want to vote for that. Uh, as an example, uh, uh, neither would filed uh, in that matter. So um, it didn't happen, uh, but there was a lot of lobbying before that. So there was a lot of lobbying on, on a sort of general forum that everybody was kept in uh, to try and change the, the league's position on that and to get a, a question where we knew maybe what the options were. That didn't happen. We've had a vote. And so now we go forward. With regard to each chairman talking, unfortunately, um, again, it's very polarised. And you've got, uh, in, in simple terms, you've got the haves and the have-nots. Uh, the haves are purely in, uh, sorry, the haves, have-nots are purely uh, in, in, in survival mode at this stage. And, and, uh, and I'd say that the have-nots probably in, in our league probably constitute about maybe 80%. Uh, and then we've got the haves. Uh, and of course, they are in a different mode. Uh, they, they want to, uh, you know, they want to, 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 uh, to, to have a, uh, a playoff situation, I think. Uh, most of the haves by definition are using in that top half of the table because they got the most money, uh, not always. Uh, and I think most of those people would, would want some sort of playoff situation or uh, so that it allows them to, to go up to the next league. So because of that, because of that, therefore, there isn't really a good, shall we say, uh, discussion between the various chairmen, which there probably should be, because everyone really has got has got a self-interest, haven't they? And they're, they're interested in, in their club and their position. And it's something I touched on last time we talked. And I think that's maybe one of the bad things that's come out. I'd hope one of the good things that come out was that we would work more together and, and more think about uh, is, is, is it good, what's good for the league? I mean, the critical part, and it cannot be underestimated, is that we do have a league and we have leagues below. You would have seen yesterday, I'm sure yourself on the news that, you know, the first casualty, okay, not a big name, but Rill, who's been in business, you know, North Wales, 146 years, I've gone out of business. I mean, it's only a little club with respect to Rill, but it's just a little sign, isn't it? That there they are. And they went out of business with debts, I think of 
200,000, you know, how does real get in debts with 200,000? But it tells you, can you think of the numbers further up? There's, there's, there's huge implications here. So I wish we were working together more. Uh, I wish we could get a consensus, but I think that's football and, and that's the way it is. So uh, I suppose the blunt answer to that is no. So we're aware that that will be a lengthy process. I'm sure we'll have many discussions and there'll be a lot that goes on and a lot to come out about all of that and our options. What do you expect to see happen over the coming weeks? What does our immediate future look like? Well, I think they, over the coming weeks, um, there's, there's, there's a couple of things going to happen, isn't there? What, one is, uh, I think a decision is going to be made, I think within the next two weeks, whether or not we're actually going to continue in the leagues above. I said a few minutes ago, that's going to drive everything. The second thing that's going to happen is that there's going to be a big showdown between the clubs, the players and their agents on contracts. Because there is no way that clubs without any income from anywhere, and we touched on that, no gate money, no sponsorship money, no bar money, all of those things without any income at all then those clubs, a lot of clubs will just go to the wall if they have to continue paying players on the current contracts. And I know, I know the players don't want to hear this. I know they don't. And I know that, uh, I know my players think I'm a bit of an ogre about this, but I'm just telling the truth. I'm just telling it as it is. And that cannot continue, it, it, it can't. And so something has to give. And I think that, uh, again, once we see, shall we say, the first brick out of the dam go and the water start to seep through, so to speak, then I think then a lot of others will follow. Uh, and, and, you know, we, we've, we've said many times we're going into uncharted waters here. Literally, we've never been here before. So it's going to be interesting to see what develops uh, in the next two weeks. But I, I think you'll see some major developments. I think it's also important to note on that point, it's not just... It's not just players that are facing uncertainty as well. Football as a business has an awful lot of employees across multiple, you know, multiple clubs. So there's, there's many people sat in, you know, worrying times as well, isn't there? Well, uh, I mean, I'm sure that the very good question, Adam, you asking that, because probably I'm sure you think about your own job. Uh, but uh, no, the, look, look, we are more than, uh, uh, you know, more than, more than just, you know, 16 football players, you know, there's a manager, there's a chief exec, there's yourself, there's Jonathan in our uh, in our marketing department, and then there's the groundsman, and there's, uh, you know, all the people that are employed in the football club, and there's a whole community trust. Uh, we've got a very good community trust at AFC Found, you know, we employ about 17 people, uh, they're all currently furloughed, we, and they do an amazing amount of business uh, in the community, and I, I, I know one of the things that we're still uh, doing, for example, at the moment, uh, just to give you an idea what uh, community trusts do uh, these days, is uh, we, we, we're actually uh, teaching uh, Syrian refugees English uh, as an example, uh, a part of, of what we do. And uh, so it's the community trust, it's also the academy. We have quite a successful academy. We have about 90 students uh, that are currently enrolled. Uh, doing a BTEC and football, uh, coming from all over Lancashire. Uh, there's, there's, that's completely closed at the moment, as we know. And then we've got all the soccer schools, we put on all the academies, uh, you know, for all the kids come down there at night. So if the whole thing was to collapse, and let me, I hope you maybe talk about that. So to give our fans some, uh, maybe some reassurance. If the whole thing was to collapse, which it may do at many clubs, well, it will do at many clubs, not may do, it will do at many clubs, then the implications are far greater than just football players. You're absolutely right. So uh, that's, uh, that's certainly uh, a consideration, uh, you know, or consideration for, 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 for everybody uh, involved. Uh, to think about when, when we're making the tough decisions. Uh, and, and I suppose we're, we come back full circle, don't we, into the kind of football wages thing. From our point of view, we've 
you know, just to, to for, for specifically for our own fans, um, uh, because obviously these these are concerning times. Uh, it's. It's, it's important to note that we're, I suppose we're a very lucky club in many ways is that, you know, we built a, 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 a brand new stadium, a complex there, uh, which uh, the whole thing was somewhere around 18 million when it was finished. Uh, and we're fortunate that we're, we're totally debt free in that business. So we, we don't owe a penny. Uh, we haven't got a bank hounding us. Uh, we haven't got to, you know, builders hounding us or, shareholders uh, is completely 100% owned by, by my family uh, and therefore from that point of view thank goodness we haven't got pressure uh, or added pressure shall we say what we've got to deal with is the actual cash flow of running the business the day-to-day -day payments uh, is it is equally as large and equally as important and we're taking steps on that and the majority of that as I, I've touched on a number of times, comes down to wages. That is the biggest cost that we're going to have going forward. Uh, so, and those are the matters that we're, we're, we're currently addressing. Thank you for answering those questions, David. We look forward to putting some more questions to you in the next episode. No, it's a pleasure. Thank you.